Today we cover Pennestone Station on the Old Woodhead Line, the Pennestone Viaduct and the Thurgoland Tunnel. We are looking at the Old Woodhead Line at Pennestone Station. The current Pennestone Line runs from Sheffield to Huddersfield through Barnsley and Pennestone. The Woodhead Line closed to passengers in the 1970s and fully closed to goods in 1981. The line has been transformed into the Trans Pennine Trail. The old station building you now see in front of you is now privately owned for commercial use. Um, the waiting rooms that you get now are on the main platform on the Sheffield to Huddersfield line. That's where the old track bed used to be. Not really supposed to be down here, but we've snuck down. There's lots of people going by over the other side. <laughs> Wait for someone to shower us and scream at us. <laughs> Hopefully that won't. There's the platform. Still looking pretty good really. There's our other little urban explorer there. Oh, it's tickling my leg. Something's tickling my leg. <laughs> <laughs> The last remaining foundation block A sculpture to celebrate the steel workers.
Penner Stone Line was actually electrified in 1954 and ahead of you you can see the power control centre that once was. It is now used for commercial use. A turntable. that was it's a busy day today because it's bank holiday so <clears throat> struggling to get time on my own which is really quite frustrating to see one of these I haven't seen one uh, there is another place uh, that I've been told about one that's uh, a charity run by charity and um, at some point I'm going to see that It's nice that they sort of kept it. It would be nice if there was a track on it, but never mind. Can't have everything. Right, now run round 50 times. No. Yeah, come on, challenge. No. Yeah, come on. No. 50 times. <laughs> well, there we go. Take two. <laughs> Are we dressed now? Ah, <laughs> Parts of the track. So we've just got absolutely drenched again. A big storm came over and uh, it literally has drowned us. It's gone right through our raincoats and our bags. The my lot. leggings are so wet again. Oh, it's a disaster. My leg my leg nice pink sunset. Very pink. Sunset after the rain. We are freezing actually now. I mean, look, that's literally, it was dry. It, it was dry. And now it's very, very wet. I mean, we're drenched through. Our feet are soaked and everything. But this is sort of where we are. Then we've gone past, what was that other place called? No idea. Oxworth. No. No. Ox, Ox, like, <laughs> <laughs> we can with a no. Let's go with that. We're almost there. It's one of those, this is the Fergoland tunnel coming up. Uh, and we've walked from Penistone. Um, but we saw this tunnel or fair way back and it just feels like it's getting further and further away. <laughs> it is. But we're, we're almost near it. Oh, nearly knocked my wire. Well, I did knock my wire. It's proper freezing now. So we'll get to it. And we'll come back. Right, we're now at Thurgoland Tunnel. 
it's a double bore tunnel and I have my torch on the left one which is blocked off um, the tunnel was left abandoned the tunnel's 924 feet This ran from through Pe Penistone to Watley. I don't need the torch in there, do I? Oh, it's guess what? Slippy again. Like <laughs> it's in all our videos. <laughs> Always slippy, always wet, always mushy. Oh, echo, echo. Oh, there's a nice dump there, look. Anyone want that for the garden? Uh, what do you reckon, 25 quid a piece? Anyone going? Oh, that's for you, isn't it? plants, you know. So I think I will get my camera out because I'll this amazing nice photographs. Shame we've got some coloured torches as well. Oh, it's a bit dark in this bit. Hello, lights. Someone shouts back and I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Getting tired. Oh, what was that? Oh, spooky. I just saw somebody. <laughs> Is it haunted? The original tunnel was opened in 1845. It was a single bore running two tracks. keeps going off. If a light goes on and off, there's always a spirit around. Oh, look. Right. 50 quid for that bit, right? God, Jesus. Stinks. in the tunnel. Yeah, yeah that does look like it looks really freaky, especially with that light going on and off. And going to the back and beyond.
<clears throat> oh no, don't, no, no. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Hang on, I'm going to put the torch on that. It's like really, oh my God. Stop it. <laughs> Got a waterfall, darling. <laughs> That's a wee waterfall. Oh, this place could freak you the hell out in the dark. Jeez, man. There's a ghost. No way I'm gonna get anywhere near that in the dark. <laughs> Boo. You can't you can't get out. Oh my goodness. Huh? No, I mean Okay, that's one for another day then. I know that you can, if you, I don't know how you get up there, you obviously have to go up much further back that way. But you can, you can get to the top of the other tunnel. It's been filled in, but there is a gap. And you, um, well, get a torch, you can see in. And if you're brave enough, you can slide in or skinny enough, something like that. So... Anyway, well there, there you go, so I go down tunnel, we made it from Penistone and now we've got to walk all the way back. And we need some dry clothes because we're soaked right through. So, very, and it's very cold now. The Penistone Viaduct was designed by Sir John Hawkshaw, built by Messrs Ingram and Bower, using local stone to construct the viaduct, which was completed in 1849. It opened in 1850. The viaduct is a Grade II listed building and has been listed since April 1988. It has 29 arches, spans over 333 metres, with a height of up to 30 metres. The viaduct goes over the River Don and in 1916 one of the arches collapsed due to a crack in the parapet as well as the rain which weakened the foundations. The locomotive was suspended then fell to the ground. The crew managed to jump out however had it been a little later the school children would have boarded the train. It took six months for the repair to be done and the line to reopen. Pennestone Viaduct has been classed as an unlucky place to cross the Pennines. There have been a fair few accidents. At one time, the train used to stop on the viaduct, awaiting to come into the station. 
It would allow passengers to get off and walk along to the station. A local told me that in the 1880s, a blind man stepped off thinking the train was at the station. He stepped out onto the viaduct, then took a second step and fell to his death. In 1914, another man jumped off the bridge in an attempt to commit suicide. However, he did not die, but was left unrecognisable due to his severe injuries. His father identified him by his boots and clothing. He recovered and went into Royal Engineers Corps in 1915 and later discharged as not fit for service. Some of the earlier accidents uh, dating back from 1845, cattle drovers neglect a stray cow was on the line and caused the train to derail. The cow was almost cut in half. In 1884, Ball House Bridge accident, a problem with the axle caused derailment. 19 passengers died at the scene and five more later in hospital. In 1885, Barnsley Junction accident involving a wagon and loco causing derailment, uh, four passengers killed and 47 injured. In 1889, another accident at Huddersfield Junction one killed, damage to trains and track bed. And there's been further accidents since, more minor ones. You get beautiful views of the viaduct in Water Meadows Park. Coming up is a video we took last March in 2023 of the viaduct in the really thick snow we had. And it looks very beautiful with the snow.